Hello and welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Christina. And in today's video, I really want to share some creative inspiration with you. I have five DIY projects. There's going to be lots to cover. So let's jump into project number one. I want to show you how easy it is to stitch up with your hands a super chunky blanket. And I want to show you how you can make a waffle pattern. First, you're going to make a slip knot. So cross over your yarn. Then you're going to take the working yarn, slip it through. Now you have your first stitch. You're going to want to make your stitches approximately about two inches. And you're going to keep repeating taking the working yarn and slipping it through each stitch that you make. Now you're going to chain 26 stitches. Now that you've made 26 stitches, you're now going to be using the top bump to create a second row. So you're going to yarn underneath that little bump that you see me do now and you're going to make three stitches using the yarn underneath. Now what you want to do is take that working yarn. Now you're going to do the exact same thing but you're actually going to do it over. So we did three stitches under. Now we're doing three stitches over. This is going to create a waffle pattern which really makes it thick and textured. I want to show you again really up close. So taking that working yarn, you're going to find that first bump and you're going to take the working yarn from underneath and make three stitches. Now we're going to take the working yarn, pull it forward, and we're going to use the bump and pull it from the top. So from the front, three from the back, three from the front. So you have a nice even stitch all the way around the blanket. The first stitch and the last stitch of each row will be stitched from working yarn behind. And I'll show you that in just a second. So a great way to remind yourself of the last stitch is you're actually just going to drop it. Just leave that stitch. Now we're going to repeat the exact same process. So I'm going to go over the same stitch. The pattern will be is we're going to make three rows with the stitches going in the same format. This will keep the pattern of the waffle look. Now I've completed three rows with my stitches going three under, three over. So the very end stitch is always stitched from the back. This will create all of the outside rim of your blanket to be perfectly even and it will just look more uniformed as well as make the border the same all the way around. It stitches up so quickly because it's so thick and chunky and super soft. To show you how to yarn a new ball, you're literally just going to tie it into a knot, pull it nice and taut, then you're just going to cut the tails and continue on. Again, just to remind you, the last stitch of each row is, it's kind of a drop stitch, but you're always stitching in the same way. So I stitch it using the working yarn behind the stitch. And again, I'm going to kind of be showing you why, because it makes the entire border of your blanket the same pattern. This pattern is so easy. It's three under, three over. Then you make three rows doing the exact same thing. Then you're going to switch where the over and under go and this creates the waffle. Because this stitches up so fast, I did this in over two hours. And the beauty of this pattern is it looks the exact same on both sides. Starting on a fresh row to close the blanket, you're going to actually take two stitches, pull the working yarn through, make one stitch, grab the next stitch, pull the working yarn through one stitch. This is going to continue that pattern with those dropped end stitches and the beginning of your blanket. Again, all to look the same as a border around your blanket. It's that quick and easy. 
I made this whole blanket in probably about two and a half hours. Not only is this chunky chenille yarn super thick and soft, it's machine washable and you can you put it in the dryer. To close your blanket, you're just going to make a knot and you can cut it at the knot or as you can see me doing here, you can just weave the tail into the blanket. In some future upcoming tutorials, I'm going to show you the faux thick chunky yarn as well as the loop it, which is a finger looping. And it's going to be a lot of fun. You can create some really fun textures with these. I wanted to try with a pencil post. This is five feet by two inches in diameter that they use for fencing. So I had my husband cut up different lengths from this pencil post. And what I want to do is get him to drill with a one and a half bit, just a circle inside each of the pieces that we cut from the pencil post. He marked on the drill bit how far down in each of these cut pieces of pencil post, how far down he's going to make the hole in the center at the top. The pencil post is inexpensive and I thought this would be a great way to add tea lights. So because it's a raw wood, I'm going to go ahead and I will be adding some white wax to seal and this will help protect the wood and hydrate it. And two, before I put the white wax on, I am going to sand them down using a 120 grit sandpaper. I wanted to keep the raw wood look as I thought it would look really natural and make beautiful decor. It also makes for great gifts, but I also didn't want to take away from the raw wood look. So I thought by doing this, it will help make it nice and smooth, but still show that beautiful wood grain. I am using a waxing brush, but if you do not have one, not to worry, just use a lint-free cloth and you're just going to wipe it on and wipe it off and all of the grain to the wood is going to basically absorb the wax. But as you can see, any pivots that are in the wood really get highlighted and I think this is a beautiful look and makes absolutely stunning decor for any wood project. The best part is I only paid maybe $10 for this entire project and I have five candle holders for my tea lights. I have a ton of canvases and I love to work on big canvases. This is 48 by 48 inch. So what I've done is it's originally actually a black canvas and I am putting on white gesso. So I've already started one layer and because it's going from black to white, I'm actually going to go ahead and show you what I did just to create some random textures. And I'm just using a small trowel that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and just create another layer and this is actually just going to shadow out some of that black. I don't mind if there's a little bit showing through, but I really want to give this a very high, high pigment, white textured look. I'm going to be using these adhesive spreaders and as you can see, there's two of them and the ends are a little bit different and that's what I wanted. I wanted the texture I want to create to be a little bit different so the teeth are a little bit big and one is a little bit small. And I'm just using regular caulking that you can buy even at a dollar store. So I'm going to be using a total of four tubes of this and that's because this canvas board is huge. 
when I started with the gesso on my second layer of it, I started to circle out two large circles that overlap. I'm only going to be placing this caulking spread texture in those circles. I'm going to be using the same artist trowel that I used with the gesso just to spread it around so I can kind of create as much evenness with the caulking into the circle before I start to make the textured look that I'm going with. The caulking tubes are very inexpensive and I always buy my canvas boards at Michael's when they have their 50% off sales. All I'm going to do here is use those adhesive spreaders with the different comb textures at the bottom. No particular fashion I'm doing it, I'm just kind of going with what I like and I keep playing around with this spreadable caulking. And this is going to just keep adding more and more texture the more I keep spreading it around. I wasn't too sure at first how much caulking I was going to be needing, so I worked in small sections and then went around and made my textures with the adhesive spreaders. There is absolutely no right and wrong. All you're doing is playing with the texture. I just want to create a little bit of symmetry to this canvas and have some fun with it. This is a fantastic and easy way to create textures for your walls and it looks beautiful against a contrast color when you do a white textured art. But if you love the texture, you can always add some acrylic paint on top and create any color scheme, whether it's one or more, on top of this particular type of art. Once you've completed your textures and everything is completely dry, then you could go ahead and add in your colors. This is a great abstract way to play and to, again, looking at ways of adding more textures to your home decor designs. I was able to find another spreader that I had in my garage, so I have even more textures that I can create with my circles and more symmetry to the circles. Again, just layering that texture on top of each other. I did find it super helpful to use the different comb sizes to get the look as well as the texture I wanted. I wanted to create my own floor lamp, so I'm going to DIY this using a spruce wood. We're going to need four cuts of 50 inch wood, and we're using a spruce wood. We have three cuts already, and we're going to be using the copper pipe for the center. The important thing was to create this is making 10 degree cuts for the tripod cuts, those four pieces of wood, they are cut at the 10 degree angle. The base, all of the outside of the base, which I'm going to show you in a second, is also going to be cut at the 10 degree angle. Now we're making a base, which will look like an X. The inside cuts are going to be straight, and the outside cuts will be at a 10 degree angle as well to match our other cuts. Having these 10 degree angle cuts is what's going to bring them together and create that tripod look. So as you can see, the inside of the base is straight and the outsides are beveled. We're going to go ahead and use dowels, but you could use just L brackets as well. So whatever's easier for you. 
Using the wood dowels just makes it look a little more seamless, but the L brackets can also go underneath so you wouldn't see them as well. Using wood glue and the wood dowels, we're just going to adhere everything together and let it dry. So again, this will be 50 inches in height and the wood cuts themselves are two inches wide, one inch in depth. Also using a two by two scrap piece of wood, we've made a base which will help to hold our lampshade. So I found this lampshade at a thrift shop a while back and it is quite large. It's probably about 24 inches in height. Anyhow, it's too big. So I'm just gonna go and cut it directly in half. And what I wanna do is use the skeleton on the inside as well as the outside as a base, but I'm looking for it to be about 12 inches and I'm gonna show you why. Lampshades can get very costly, especially when you want a certain look. So this was a great way to improvise and make the cost of it a lot cheaper. I'm using dowels that are half inch and they are 12 inches in length. There are so many dowel sizes out there, but whatever you have access to, you could create a very similar look, even if it's a little bit smaller. The overall width of my lampshade was about 55 inches, so I measured out thinking, and I overestimated just in case, is approximately about 100 dowels. And you can get packs of 25 at your dollar store, or you can go to a hardware store and have the longer dowels cut to the length of your lampshade. But it's relatively inexpensive, and it has such a beautiful look. So I'm using the Gorilla Glue hot glue and I'm just going to run them down the dowel and then adhere them to the actual lampshade. I will have all the cuts and the measurements for the entire project in the description box below. We are going to need a hole from the center base and the two by two block at the top for the actual light fixture and the cord. So we used a half inch screw and this will accommodate the copper pipe that's gonna hide the electrical. So now you can see how the 10 degree angle cuts come together. So the outside of the base was cut at 10 degree as well as the 50 inch stand and all four pieces. We're gonna go ahead and use some wood glue and we made some pilot holes so we don't split the wood and we're just gonna screw in all of the four posts that bring the lamp itself together. And now you can see the copper pipe will go into the center and again this is just to hide the electrical. The copper itself is half an inch copper piping and again you can grab that at a hardware store it's very inexpensive. You can cut it with a cutter to the exact length that you need. We recently took apart a couple of lamps from a previous tutorial so we're recycling the actual light fixture itself including the wiring but i would recommend if you don't have anything like that on hand or electrical's not your thing is you could actually purchase on amazon very inexpensive all of the components that you would need to thread the light as well as the electrical in for a project like this so just like the base, we have the pilot holes and the angle cuts. So this way we can put the fixture on the top and this is actually gonna hold the lamp shade as well as the light. With inexpensive wood and some recycled parts, we were really happy with our results.
I am hugely overdue for a living room makeover. Over the last couple of years, it's just been accumulation of things. Things have just kind of overclouded itself around the room and it's got to go. And I need some kind of organization. And this is probably part and partial from being home so much this last year through a pandemic. And it's great. And sometimes I find change is better than a rest. All the furniture that we are moving out of this room has got to go. It's too big, it's too bulky, it clouds the room, and I really want to give a much more simpler, very easy, but comfortable design to this room, including some color changes. So all the pieces that you're seeing now that I am moving out of this room have been sold and they are being picked up, so we're just going to take them down to the garage for their new owners. And I'm so thankful that my husband really helped me out with this. Now because I work full time and I am home when I'm not at work, I've just been spending so much time in this room and it just feels so clustered with too much stuff. I'm just so thankful to be moving everything out. So I purchased a rug online and it was delivered and I would have preferred to have seen it up close and personal but I'm pretty happy with it so far and it's by the Noon Loom. I've actually purchased a few things online but the delivery is taking quite some time. I ordered two chairs from the Ikea store and they've arrived, so we're gonna go and set those up. My dogs are not thrilled with the new arrangements going on. They wanna know where their couches are. So my husband and I decided to devote two full nights in getting this completely done, or at least in sections, from wall paint to ceiling paint, trim, putting furniture out, as well as bringing furniture in. So there's a lot of work involved. I find doing things in sections, that's why I wanted to make this into at least two, if not three parts into this makeover because there's so much work. And I do have some other parts and pieces that are gonna be coming through by mail. In order to anchor this to the ceiling, there is other parts that I've had to order which did not arrive, So, but I will have this on the part two or three of this makeover. So I'm really looking forward to hanging this in my front window. Now we're going into day two. Everyone's a little bit tired, but the hard labor part of it is over. Now it's just tidying up some more. And I find it's really helpful when you're redecorating to remove as much as possible. This is my favorite collection by Benjamin Moore when I do anything with paints is the historical collection. I actually originally painted my home in most of the walls in Rever Pewter. It was a great way to start as I started to decorate when I first moved in. But this picture in particular was what really inspired and I wasn't sure if it was going to work here but I was going to give it a go. I have struggled with this fireplace. I don't know why. I don't know if it's just the shape or the design. Everything's so boxy but I thought you know what I'm going to step back and I'm going to start from the scratch again. I like some of the things I've done, but again, I just wanna have the whole room come together and have a little bit more of a cohesive look to how this whole room and makeover is going to work. I always buy sample sizes first, especially when I'm going to be changing up colors. So this way I can sample what it will look like in the room. Depending on your lighting and how light reflects in your room will play a huge part in how the color will turn out or if you like it. But as you can see, I need to paint my ceiling desperately and you can see the original Rever Pewter and now I'm using a, what they call a Guilford Green and I love it, but I'm not sure if I like it on the fireplace. For my walls, I'm going to use a Lewisburg Green and I loved it in the photo. So I'm really gonna see if it works. For the trim, I'm using a Wickham Gray, and what I've done is I've just created my baseboards to look higher up. So they're six inches high instead of three. I'm just gonna use the painter's tape. I like to use the Regal brand of the Benjamin Moore. It's primer and paint in one, and I can generally get away with one coat, maybe a few little touch-ups. It's fantastic paint as well as it's ultra matte. So it has kind of this flat 
matte, kind of like a chalk paint look to it. So the top, middle, and bottom ground of the fireplace, I've put a primer so I can go ahead and use a charcoal Kindle black color by Benjamin Moore. And I like it, but I need the daytime. Now it looks softer. And I really like it, but I'm not 100% sure. I think it's really warming. I think the room is coming together. It's not finished by any means, but it's definitely a lot better than it was. So I'm really looking forward to putting more in my part two and part three of this makeover. Thank you so much for watching today's video and please, I really love to read your comments. Let me know in the comment box below which one your favorite project was. This really helps me understand what projects and inspiration you're looking for. As well as if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and notification bell. It's gonna tell you when I upload my next video. I'm really looking forward to sharing more projects with you soon. Till then, take care.